Liberty Vitterts here, professor of data science at Washington University, features editor of the Harvard Data Science Review. Good to see you. All right. If we begin with this idea, right, that the Earth is getting warmer, at least from the mid-70s till now, we agree on that, stipulate that. From that point, what can science tell us conclusively? Science can tell us conclusively that after the for the past 40 or 50 years that the, the climate is getting warmer. There is no doubt about that. But there have also been 40 or 50 year periods in the past where the earth has gotten warmer. So what we are not sure of is the level of impact of humans on this earth. And one of the problems is that as you said, Leland, reasonable people can disagree not in the world of climate change. Reasonable people are not allowed to disagree. You're not allowed to ask questions about the science and the data. And when people say this is settled science, a lot of it is estimation. For example, the Miami airport has an enormous amount of asphalt, and when the heat comes onto it, it reflects off of it. And that can change these levels of temperature that we take. So all of this needs to be taken as a trend, as something that we're looking at. But to say that this is settled science, that we're all going to be doomed in 12 years, or that this is the hottest in the past 100,000 years, or other organizations have been saying 150,000 years, which right there should tell you there's a problem, that you have 50,000 year differences in this. Um, we need to we need to take this as what it is, which is an indication, but not necessarily something that you should not be buying houses on the ocean because of. All right. So you said that people in the academic community aren't allowed to disagree, which is always dangerous because we know how, uh, at least over the past couple of years, we've learned science can occasionally be wrong. And well, for a while, scientists thought the earth was flat, too. So there you go. But I, I think about the, the sort of the, the push behind climate change, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, which was uh, Build Back Better and various other things, impact on global temperature. We're spending about a trillion dollars uh, ostensibly about climate change and to protect the climate. In the best case, it would lower uh, the temperature across the earth by less than a quarter of a degrees. In the worst case, uh, something that is truly statistically insignificant. Um, how much of the climate change orthodoxy is pushed by politics in academia? How much of it is pushed by the money? Well, you just said the first question, which is we are spending. When you say we, you mean the United States is spending this money. We're not talking about the rest of the world. China's CO2 emissions this year was double that of the United States. And the rate at which they're emitting CO2 over the years is threefold that of the U.S. If you add up Russia and India, they are, dub they are over what the United States emits in CO2 emissions. So to say that the U.S., Spellers like good for us. It's the, it's not just emitting just in the airspace above the U.S. and that's all we have to worry about. We have to worry about the whole world. So we can do whatever we want, but unless everybody agrees to reducing the level of CO2 emissions, we can pound sand for as long as we want, and it's not going to do anything. Yeah, I thought about the way CNN put it uh, in one of their clips about ten, the equivalent of ten Hiroshima-sized atomic bombs explosions. Uh, per second. And I, I want to get in this concept of, of 10,000 or 100,000 or 125,000 years uh, that, that somehow we can look back to when before or at the time cavemen existed and go, oh, well, they must have known how hot it was um, in Miami. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.